Here are three strong indications that someone is emotionally dangerous and God is telling you to avoid this person. Number one, someone is emotionally dangerous and should be avoided if their beliefs about you are actually controlled by their pre-existing imbalances. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone who seems like they have a split personality? It's like one day they're really mature, they want to talk through issues, it seems like they're really liking you, things are going great. But then all of a sudden something switches, like a light switch, and then all of a sudden they're imbalanced, they're paranoid, they're reading into everything that you say in the worst possible way, and then they flip back and then they keep flipping back to the other unhealthy state. This type of person is usually being controlled by things that have nothing to do with you. This flip-flopping aura around this person is usually attributed to imbalances that this person had before you even came into the equation. And thus, this makes a relationship with this person very difficult because no matter what you do, you're not going to be assessed accurately because they're just seeing you through these imbalanced lenses. Now, don't get me wrong. All of us struggle with being imbalanced as humans. Some days we're just off. We can get narrow-minded, especially when we're in arguments with people. We can start just pinpointing our one view and we can't see anyone else's view and we all get in that unhealthy state of being. But what a healthy, normal person does is they realize they're doing that and they might stick to it for a while because we're all sinful, but eventually they snap out of it and they say, I'm not acting right. I need to change this. I'm being imbalanced. And so they have this self-awareness to know I'm not acting right and either they don't act on those feelings or they work on those issues they know they have. Worst case scenario, they wake up the next day and they realize, man, I was a jerk. I acted ridiculous. I need to apologize to that person that I was disrespectful to or imbalanced towards. So an unhealthy, dangerous person lacks this self-awareness. They never snap out of that imbalance that we all experience from time to time, and they just always live in that place. They're totally committed to the belief that their reality, the reality, is always accurately reflected by their feelings. The rest of us, normal people who have normal issues, realize our feelings are off sometimes, and we're viewing reality in an unhealthy way. Imbalanced, dangerous people who really just need to be avoided are unable to accept this. They always are committed to the belief that my feelings are always accurate and reality is always accurately re represented by how I feel. These type of people are unable to see that they have issues and that they need to work on them. The hallmark trait of an unhealthy, dangerous person who really needs to be avoided is the person who always blames other people for their own issues. Sadly, there's nothing you can really do to help this person if they're not willing to receive help and if they lack the humility that we all need to accept that none of us are perfect, we all have issues. If this person thinks they're perfect when they're really not, you're gonna have to avoid that person because they're dangerous to be around. As Proverbs 9 verse 7 says, Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Number two, someone is emotionally dangerous and should be avoided if they're narcissistic and they're gaslighting you. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone that you really cared about, but you have a problem with them and you're scared to bring up this issue? But after a lot of prayer and contemplation, you come up with an idea of how to express your concern in the most loving, gentle way possible. You're feeling good about it. You go there all prayed up, ready to go, and you share that problem and everything is turned around on you. Suddenly, this person turns the conversation and now they're attacking you. You're the crazy person. You're the one with the issue. You did your best to be gentle and loving, but this person was completely unwilling to hear it, and now you walk away feeling like a total failure, like you completely misunderstood the whole situation, and really, this person's the victim and you're the bad guy. If someone is making you feel like that over and over again, and this is a repeated theme in your relationship, 
odds are that person is narcissistic and they're gaslighting you. Narcissism and gaslighting usually go hand in hand. A narcissist, as many of you know, are very self-centered, they're completely narrow-minded, everything in the world revolves around themselves, and people are tools to be manipulated to accomplish whatever that person wants to accomplish. So it makes sense that gaslighting is a tool that they use to accomplish this because gaslighting is when you make the other person feel crazy and the, that they're viewing reality in an improper way and that they are totally insane for seeing this issue that you just have no idea about. That's gaslighting. And it makes sense that a narcissist uses that because a narcissist always needs to be right. Therefore, they need to have a tactic to make this other person see the world that they want them to see it in. Now, again, just like in point one, we all have to realize that at times, we all have that selfish tendency to try to twist the situation and make ourselves look better than the person that we're arguing with. Everybody does that type of thing. That doesn't mean you're a hardcore narcissist and that you're always gaslighting people. But again, a healthy person eventually wakes up and they're repentive, they're humble, they realize, ah, I screwed up, I need to make that right. I need to change that type of selfish behavior and mindset, I need to stop you know, twisting this person's words around. And if they did that, they go and apologize and they try to do better in the future. This type of person I'm talking about in this video is unable to do that. They're never able to accept that it's impossible for them to always be right and for everyone else to always be wrong. That's just not possible. Things won't ever get better if you're truly dealing with a narcissist. The only way for things to get better if you're actually dealing with a narcissist is for that person to no longer be a narcissist. Now, does that happen? Yes, it can happen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, people can repent and change and work on their mental health issues and repent of extreme selfishness. Does it happen often? Unfortunately not. It's a rare instance that a true narcissist breaks out of that narcissism. So if you're dealing with this type of person, the only solution is to remove them from your life and pray for them. As Proverbs 22, 24 through 25 explains, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. And number three, if someone is being dependent on you in an unbiblical, unhealthy way. Oftentimes, this means that they're emotionally dangerous and should be avoided. Now, in healthy relationships, there should be dependence on one another. Depending on someone isn't a bad thing. You want someone to depend on you and drop their guard, and in a loving relationship, you should be free to drop your guard and actually start depending on this other person. As Galatians 6 verses 2 through 3 explains, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But in context, these two verses, Galatians 6, 2 through 3, are actually surrounded by, sandwiched by, two warning signs. In Galatians 6 verse 1 and in Galatians 6 verses 4 through 5. Verse 1 states, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Here we can see that it's good to try to help people who are struggling, but we also need to be really careful that we don't get so involved in someone else's mess that it becomes our own mess. Galatians 6 verses 4 through 5 then states, But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each one will have to bear his own load. Not only must we be careful we don't get dragged down by other people's issues, here we are also warned about the dangers of trying to take credit for other people's good. In other words, it's wrong to try to find our identity in someone else. The only thing we can really do to help each other is to point each other to the one true savior, Jesus Christ. If someone's unwilling to look to Jesus and they're only wanting to look to you to be their source of hope and healing and just their everything, then this is a sign they're depending on you in an unhealthy, unbiblical way. Consider subscribing if you wanna help support this channel. And here's a playlist of past videos I've done about unhealthy people who should be avoided. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.